What is up guys, Lachlan here. I'm finally giving an update on the water injection system for the jet engine. I know it's been a long time, but I've made a lot of progress putting this together and today is test day. So for those who are new to the channel, the reason I'm adding this water injection system to the turbocharger based engine is because I've added an auxiliary combustion chamber here. And I've been using this to test converging diverging nozzles and some other R&D sort of things. I'll put some videos in so you know what I'm talking about. These are a couple of the nozzles that I've been testing. And as you can see, this auxiliary combustion chamber taps off air from the compressor, which basically means that I have less air available for the main combustion process in the engine, which leads to very high temperatures and also lowers the pressure ratio going through the turbine. So I inject water in there essentially to replace the mass flow rate that's lost to the auxiliary combustion chamber. Now, water injection is nothing new to jet engines. Um, you can use them even when you're not tapping air off the compressor. So just to give a quick overview of the water injection system, essentially I'm using a cheap pump for now. Eventually I'll get a higher pressure one, but this one's rated to 160 PSI. I've also got a fuel pressure regulator, which regulates the pressure to about 140 PSI. This goes through a ball valve, which is actuated by a stepper motor with a gearbox. There's definitely better ways of, of doing this, um, but this is just a cheap way of doing it with what I had available. And then I can test the pressure on the output here with a analog pressure transducer. So this then flows into this cross, which then goes to three separate injectors on the engine. And I'll add a clip here so you can see what they look like on the inside. So yeah, let's get to the testing. I'm gonna be testing it both internally, but then I'm also gonna set up a nozzle on the outside here so that you can actually see the flow going into the compressor. Um, functionally, it's not gonna be overly different but at least this way you can actually see what's going on and it might make an interesting video we'll see <laughs> So the numbers are in, drum roll. Now this is a graph of the turbine inlet temperature as well as the boost pressure and temperature exiting the compressor. Now you can see with no water injection around this period, it was running at a little bit over 760 turbine inlet temperature. And once I turned on the water injection, it rapidly decreased to around 600 degrees Celsius. So there's a roughly 160 degrees Celsius drop there. Um, and this is with about three, three and a half liters per minute of water. So I can definitely increase the amount of water going into this, um, but this is going into the dilution zone, which is kind of diminishing returns. So instead, I'm actually gonna add a additional injector to the primary zone, uh, and then I can do more testing to see what sort of impact that has. So if we have a look at the compressor flow map, I've plotted the orange line, which is essentially just the normal operation condition. This blue line is when the auxiliary combustor is open and essentially tapping air from the compressor outlet. And when you tap air off the compressor outlet, less mass flow passes through the turbine, reducing its full speed. And this causes the compressor to operate at a lower pressure ratio for the same inlet flow, moving it towards the choke region. And this effect is essentially what I'm trying to minimize with the water injection. Now, if we look at the orange plot, I was in a very similar location, both with and without water. And this makes sense because I was 
maintaining the same fuel flow both with and without you really need to increase the fuel flow in order to see a meaningful change in the pressure ratio. And I actually saw a reduction in the pressure, which also makes sense because as you add the water, it decreases the turbine inlet temperature, reducing the velocity and hence available energy, um, which in turn lowers the work going to the compressor and, and reduces the compressor pressure ratio. So this all makes sense. But next time when I do more testing, I'm going to experiment with maintaining a constant turbine inlet temperature, both with and without water, and see what sort of impact that has on pressure ratio. Now it's also important to note that this water is being injected into the dilution zone and so it doesn't have time to completely evaporate and turn to steam and there's a difference between atomization and evaporation. Evaporation is when you're actually having a phase change to a gas whereas atomization is a completely mechanical process and the increase in volume that you get and most of the benefits for pressure ratio actually come from gas because the gas expands and that's when you get a much bigger volume increase. So I'm expecting that if I add the water to the primary zone instead of the dilution zone, then I'm gonna reap more of the benefits as it's gonna have time to have the phase change to gas and then expand. Now, this is obviously internal injection into the combustion chamber. I've also done a couple of test videos with external. Ironically, I didn't have any spray nozzles lying around, so I actually had to try and whip up a Y-Jet atomization nozzle. I'll show you a couple videos of that. Now, they didn't work amazingly because um, it was basically just stuff that I had lying around. So you can see that the concept works, but it needs to be further refined. And that's when it clicked with me that I actually have a well-designed Y-Jet nozzle lying around. I think most of you do. It's called a spray gun. So once I got that out and tested, then you can see that it's a very low mass flow rate. But it gets a very fine atomization. And for the purpose of testing with the external stuff, it's purely a visually thing to visualize the flow going into the compressor and to demonstrate the water injection system. But I'll play some videos of the testing that went on with that. So that just about wraps up this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the footage. This was definitely an interesting one. Uh, can't say I've ever tested something like that. So it was pretty fun. We got some interesting data and yeah, definitely a lot more to come. So please like, comment and subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.